G'day folks, MBS here. Today we're going to be talking about the 149 to 186 cylinder head as they came out on the early Holdens and Tiranas. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit different to the 202 head. This has actually got studs all the way down the uh, falcon point uh, with an adjustable rocker and uh, you just adjust the nut down the guts there and you can, you've got full control over the adjustment of the hydraulic lifter. Okay, uh, I've also tilted this head over for those people that sort of can't visualise very well. So I've uh, set the cylinder head up so the valve and the uh, fulcrum studs are dead straight up and down so you can see it in the proper plane. Uh, because these are canted when you uh, drop the cylinder head down. Uh, but hopefully that'll make it easier for a lot of people to actually see the angles when we get into the into the uh, angle part later on. All right, uh, so without further ado, I'd like to make a statement uh, before I start, and then I'm gonna back that statement up uh, during the course of this video. My statement is, if you're still adjusting your hydraulic lifters by adjusting this nut down half a turn to three quarters of a turn, uh, you've got your rocker geometry incorrect. I'm afraid to say. Uh, 50 years down the track a lot of things have changed and I'm going to cover that uh, really soon. Uh, so in other words what I'm saying is you're adjusting your hydraulic lifters incorrectly. Okay, You're still doing them at half a turn uh, but your rocket geometry is changing over the years and uh, 50 years later you've just got it all wrong. Your hydraulic lifters are, adjustment is fine I guess. Um, if you've seen my hydraulic lifter video, you would understand that you can actually adjust it deeper uh, to compensate for the push rod being too long, um, but you can't compensate obviously if the push rod's too short. So what, in essence, what I'm saying is your push rod's too long. Okay, you've shaved your head 40 thou over the years. Now your push rod is 40 thou too long. You're still adjusting your hydraulic lifter at half a turn. Obviously, your push rod's too long. So your valve angles are just going to be incorrect and you're not going to get the correct tracking across the uh, valve stem tip. And uh, I'll show you a picture later on of the valve stem wear on this one. You'll see the push rod's too long uh, because the hydraulic lifters have been adjusted at half a turn all its life. And uh, eventually over time they've come too long and the track on the valve has gone outboard and it's not centred on the uh, valve stem tip. Consequently, you're going to have more valve guide wear, more valve stem tip wear, more rocker tip wear, uh, because the geometries are just wrong. All right, but before we get there, I've got to actually go to the whiteboard. We'll go upstairs um, into my office, and I'll show you the correct geometry we're chasing on a whiteboard, and then we'll come back down here and have a look at this one again. Okay, here's a quick drawing that I've uh, drew up of the uh, 186 cylinder head. Uh, I'll just show you a few components that uh, would be of interest. This will be uh, the angle that we're chasing uh, of the rocker arm. That's the uh, tracking of the rocker arm across the tip of the valve stem. And of course we've got the valve, the rocker, the push rod, the stud, the stem and spring. The basic difference between this and the 202, uh, if you've seen my 202 lesson, is that this isn't fixed. The fulcrum is adjustable, whereas in the 202 it's a fixed pedestal and um, it's quite awkward to adjust it. It can be done, but uh, just a little bit more work. At least in this cylinder head we have full adjustability of the fulcrum, the rocker point, so therefore we have full control of the adjustment of the hydraulic lifter. And of course, we have control of the geometry as well. So what are we chasing here? I've got the rocker sitting at half lift, okay? At half lift. This green line here is an imaginary line from the push rod socket to the rocker tip. And if you draw a line between those two, the center point of that fulcrum actually falls on that line. So everything pivots around that point. Okay, so at half lift, as you can see in the drawing, this is a 90 degree angle here, valve stem to that line through the center of the fulcrum off to the push rod, that angle there is 90 degrees and that's what we're chasing, that 90 degree angle. 
If we do that and we now close the valve, we'll end up with angle A over here. If we've got that right, when we've got it on full lift, that will go angle B. And angle A will equal angle B. That will give us a mark right in the centre of the valve stem tip. So when the valve is closed, the rocker arm is touching here, it'll go to the centre at half lift, and to, when it goes, goes to full lift, it'll cross over the centre line and go to the outside. And it'll do the reverse coming back. So that's what we're chasing. Now of course, as in the 202 head, this head, the valve stem and the rocker fulcrum post are parallel to each other. Okay, so any head that has that similarity, this rocker geometry would be pertinent to you. Now I don't really want to take away from the rest of the video, but just to show you quickly, uh, and I, I'm sure I'm going to repeat this uh, downstairs when I show you on the real cylinder head. If you can see this, this angle, 90 degrees, angle A, angle B, you can see that if you set the fulcrum directly in a line at half lift with the valve stem tip, you will find that that forms a 90 degree angle, yeah? We've already uh, ascertained that. But, 50 years later, we've shaved 40 thou off the head, we've probably taken 10 thou off the block. But we're still adjusting this nut and making this hydraulic lifter go down half to three quarters of a turn. Some people even go one turn. Well, what you're doing there is you're going to change angle A, yeah? It's going to get shallower and shallower and shallower as the years go by. So therefore, angle A will not equal angle B and you will get this pattern on your valve stem tip will move over to the outside, okay? It'll go that way on the valve stem tip. And when you pull your cylinder head apart for a valve grind, you'll see that. You'll see the wear pattern on your valve stem tip and you'll know straight away whether your rocker geometry is okay. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty simple. I've never seen it go the other way where the valve stem uh, marking is inboard. Uh, of course, that would mean your push rod is very, very short. Uh, so I've never seen that in my entire career. It's always been either in the centre or it's been outboard. All right, I don't think I could explain it any better than that on this whiteboard. So we'll go back downstairs and we will finish off that cylinder head. Okay, now that we've uh, seen the geometry, let's see if we can relate it to the uh, real thing. I think I've got this set up pretty close. If I was to grab a 90 degree set square and run it up the valve stem to the valve tip and then go 90 degrees across, I should pass the center line of that fulcrum, yeah? Okay, at half lift. All right, now I've got a few marks here. This top yellow mark here is half lift on a 0.4 of an inch uh, um, valve lift. All right, so that line if I draw a right angle through that, I should go through the fulcrum point, okay? That is set up correctly, and that's how it was probably 50 years ago, all right, when you went down half a turn on the hydraulic lifter. What's happened since then is we've, we keep shaving the head and we've probably decked the block at least once, uh, so the push rod hasn't changed length, so all it's going to do is drop everything down lower and the push rod's going to sit up higher. When we adjust the hydraulic lifter to half a turn, we're gonna end up with something like this. Okay, I'm gonna back it off three quarters of a turn, because uh, that's pretty close to 40 thou. So now your hydraulic, I'll have to hold that now because my little stick is uh, bent to the shape. Okay, so now we've got what it, it looks like now. You're still adjusting at half a turn, and bit, because the push rod is 40 thou too long, if you've had 40 thou shaved off all the surfaces, that's going to pick up the uh, push rod end. It's going to decrease angle A and angle B will increase. So you'll get a mismatch. What you'll get is uh, the mark that rides across your valve stem will be outboard. And I'll throw that picture up now that I took of th this valve and you can clearly see that the mark is not dead center in the valve stem. All right, it's across, and that's because the push rod is now too long. 
uh, after all these years. So instead of this guy adjusting his lifters down three quarters of a turn more, he's still adjusting them at half a turn, all right? And that's what you get, all right? You're still adjusting your hydraulic lifters down half a turn. You're, in essence, changing the rocket geometry. A is going to be less than B because the push rod's too long, all right? And you'll get a track that goes over centre towards the outside of the valve. And that's it. Plain fact, guys. Uh, there's no denying it. So how do we get around this? Well, there's only a few methods you could use. You buy a shorter push rod so that you can still keep your half turn adjustment, or you adjust your hydraulic lifter down an extra three quarters of a turn. So let's do that. We'll return this back down to where it should be. It doesn't seem like much, does it? You would have seen that screw down. It doesn't appear to be much, uh, but it matters. In the end of the day, if you want uh, longevity, if I said that correctly, um, out of your cylinder head, less valve guide wear, less valve step wear, less rocket tip wear. So to correct that, like I said, just go down three quarters of a turn extra on your uh, adjustment nut. Uh, that will give you somewhere around about 40, 45 they are. Uh, extra movement down into your hydraulic lifter and that will return your rocket geometry to where it was 50 years ago. And of course, look, if you did, don't like the idea of um, the hydraulic lifter being um, tightened like that uh, excessively, your only option really is, well, there's two options. You could put a cap underneath the valve stent. That would raise that up, yeah? and you could probably go back to being a uh, half a turn, but you'd have to work out the uh, mathematics of it all to get that pretty right. Uh, look, for some of you, you might go, oh, well, who cares? Close enough's good enough. But um, look, I'm a, also a racing mechanic. I've done a lot of racing. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and what I'm telling you here is perfect, all right? If you want to be perfect, then you need to get your rocket geometry right. You won't find a racer in the world today, a professional racer, that won't get this wrong, okay? They will get it absolutely spot on. Uh, and of course, you need all the tools to do that. But here, I'm just looking at sight, getting that angle correct. Uh, because this isn't on a car, I can't uh, set it up in reality. I'm only just, uh, I know from the whiteboard lesson that uh, when it's on half lift, I've got to be exactly in line with the fulcrum at a 90 degree angle. Um, and that goes true, it doesn't matter what lift cam you've got. If you've got a greater lift cam, well obviously you need to go higher again, do you not? So if we go to the next line below, that would be a high lift cam, something that's got pretty close to a 0.67 inch lift. So you would crease your angle like so, uh, to get the rocket geometry right. Remember, we want angle A to equal angle B. So uh, it's as simple as that. You can possibly do a, a reasonable job by eye, but if you've got the tools, why not get it absolutely spot on? Well, I think I've pretty well covered a cylinder head with hydraulic lifters, okay? So you know you can actually screw it down a little bit deeper to restore your rocket geometry to where it should. Now, obviously, at the end of the day, uh, like I did on the 202 head, you're going to have to put a dummy lifter in, simulate that three, a half to three quarters of a turn drop in your hydraulic lifter, put a dummy lifter in, and get a mark across the tip of your valve, valve stem. Bearing blue, rotate it a couple of times, carefully remove your rocker, and have a look at the mark and see if you've got it right. Now, this holds true for people that haven't got a holding cylinder head. If you haven't got uh, stud and valve stem uh, parallel to each other. That's the test you would run to check your push rod length to see if your uh, adjustment is correct. You just bearing blew it and uh, get a mark and see what you have to do to get the mark to be dead center in the valve stem tip. All right, I think I've cooled that to death. Let's move on to if you've got a solid tappet camshaft. That's a totally different kettle of fish, guys. Now, obviously, you're going to be putting a feeler gauge under here, setting a gap, and whatever your push rod length is, it's just too bad, isn't it? You're gonna end up with a shallow angle A again, because your push rod's gonna be too long. 
The only way you can fix that is by valve stem cap or shorter push rods, okay? And that becomes much more difficult to get it right because you have to pick the push rod to be the right length, all right? So you can do a little bit of calculations maybe, um, so many thou off your cylinder head, so many thou off your uh, block, uh, but that still may not work exactly for you because it all depends on the base circle of your camshaft also, if whether it's a ground, reground uh, camshaft or it's brand new. And if it matches the original diameter, uh, base circle diameter of the uh, original camshaft. So you've got to do a bit of fiddling there to get it right. Uh, but yeah, but with solid tappets, you have only two choices, valve cap, change your push rod. This adjustment here is just to get you valve clearance when you put a feeler gauge in there. All right. Okay, there you go. Uh, that's the rocket geometry of the old cylinder heads and uh, pretty similar to the 202 head as well. Uh, now this only pertains, like I covered in my other video, only to this head because the uh, studs and valve stems are parallel to each other. When you've got uh, weird configurations, it's a totally different story and the only way you can figure out what to do is by looking at your mark on your valve stem tip when you run the test. All right, so if the uh, mark isn't in the center and it's inboard towards the fulcrum, your push rods are too short. If it's the other way and it's this outboard from the center, your push rods are too long, okay? Then you make the necessary adjustments to get it back into the center. Change your push rods, cha uh, change the adjustment on your hydraulic lifter. Uh, now this obviously only works with rocker, rockers, not overhead camshafts. Uh, different kettle of fish, they don't have a geometry uh, overhead cam, so it doesn't pertain. Uh, all right, so I hope I've covered that uh, well enough for you, for you to understand that you're getting it wrong at the moment. And uh, if you want longevity out of your cylinder head, then you must get this right, okay? Pretty, I mean, you've got to get it pretty close if you want to get the life out of everything. Now, one more piece of information I'd like to share with you is uh, make sure your valve stem heights are all the same height, yeah? Okay? If they're all different, you put a straight edge across here, and they're all different, take it back to the reconditioner and get them to make them all even because your rocket geometry will be different between each uh, valve, yeah? Uh, you don't want to be ginning around, setting up one, and then having to set up another one differently because the valve stem heights are different, all right? So very important, That's a, that was particularly important for the 202 cylinder head. Now this one here, and this would explain why all the valve stem uh, marks are all different where the rocker has been sweeping across. This, this one has got close to a mil difference in some of these valves, yeah? So that's crap. It's, uh, I can see from the valve stem wear that they're all over the place, okay? They're not, some are in the center, perfect. Um, and most of them aren't uh, because of the variation in uh, valve stem heights. Now, of course, while you're there, you might as well do the most critical part, and that's check your uh, retainer heights. Make sure they're even. And this one is not, okay? It's not as bad as the valve stem tips, and that's because they've probably ground the valve stem tips differently. This is going to have different valve spring pressures, okay? I don't see washers fit under, fitted underneath the valve springs to compensate for that. Generally, when you've got a valve keeper that has gone a little high, you throw a shim underneath the valve spring to retain the valve spring pressure. And that's not done on this one either. So, not, not that great, eh? Okay, so uh, make sure you check that too. All right, hope that covered it. See you in another video.